Egyptology news isn't something that breaks into the public gaze very often, but this story is definitely worth the attention. You might have heard tell of a golden city or lost city that's been found, but the story isn't over yet as more is being uncovered every day. Let's get into it. We did announce today the discovery of the largest city ever found in Egypt. It's called the, the Dazzling Atlas, dated to the reign of Amenhotep III, 1391 BC. This is the large city. It's not only for, as a settlement, but also administrative industrial area. In September of 2020, a major dig was begun, led by Dr. Zahi Hawass, near Luxor, which was once called Thebes and before that Waset, an ancient capital of Egypt. The mission was to find a funerary temple dedicated to Tutankhamun, in the hopes that some fresh tut discoveries might reinvigorate Egyptian tourism. The team soon uncovered evidence of mud brick walls, which proved much more extensive than those of a temple, and soon a city revealed itself. As of now, a great deal of this ancient city has been discovered. Human remains, distinct city districts, administrative, residential and industrial, and some amazing day-to-day -day evidence. Pottery, of course. A bakery still with its ovens. A sandal-making shop, a jeweller, and what appears to be a storage facility for dried meat. The city has not only been dated to the reign of Amenhotep III, but a name has been discovered. This, which Egyptologists would pronounce Penchehnaten, but might be more like Penchachnyatin, means the dazzling Aten, or the gleaming Aten. The Aten is the physical form of the sun, an entity which was recognised in the New Kingdom as a divinity, and later, for a brief time, as the only true god. This isn't far from another site that bears the name Dazzling Aten, a ruined palace now called Malkata, thought to have belonged also to Amenhotep III. More is being uncovered daily about this city, so I'll probably be revisiting this when more's been concluded about it. Dr. Hawass has called it a golden city because it existed during a golden age for Egypt. The reign of Amenhotep III is seen today as a time of prosperity for the Egyptian people and of economic and diplomatic success for the two kingdoms. Much about Amenhotep's reign, including day-to-day -day life, is obscured by the fact that his son, known nowadays as Akhenaten, broke with the state religion. He and almost the entire rest of his dynasty were, as a consequence, literally erased from history, including his son, Tutankhamun. Moon. The discovery of the dazzling Aten is in fact the rediscovery of a period of history that sits right on the edge of a time that ancient Egyptians would later deny ever having taken place. Its remarkable state of preservation will also undoubtedly offer more of an insight into the lives of ancient Egyptians in a time of great prosperity. In the clip I played at the beginning of the video, Dr. Hawass spoke about the third Sed festival of Amenhotep III. The Sed festival was a jubilee celebration, a sacred rite and national holiday, celebrated when a pharaoh reigned for 30 years, and then every three years after that. Amenhotep III reigned for about 38 years, not quite long enough for a fourth Sed festival. Bear in mind, something like one pharaoh in eight made it to their 30th year, so a king who managed multiple said festivals might indeed be celebrated for his favour with the gods. Amenhotep III was so well thought of that despite the fact that his reign saw the beginning of the very heresy that caused his descendants to be eradicated from history, he was recorded in canonical king lists and given an extraordinarily long reign to cover the gap where those who followed him were erased. He's a figure of significance both to Egyptologists and to ancient Egyptians, so finding a city so closely tied to him is very exciting. This discovery has inevitably been compared to the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb, and in some ways that comparison makes sense. Both events created a lot of wider public interest in ancient Egypt. Modern Egyptian tourism has struggled in recent years, not least in the past 15 months owing to the Covid-19 pandemic. It's hoped that this will help to reinvigorate tourism once international travel is back on the cards. For my money though, Tutankhamun's tomb was a vault with some treasure in it. This is a city. Some of the walls are shoulder height. There are ovens in the bakehouse. It might be less sensational than a pile of golden objects hastily buried by an embarrassed regime, but I'm much more excited by a place that was lived in rather than buried in. Tutankhamun, of course, has lent a great deal of significance in the modern era because of that treasure. 
Despite my dismissiveness just now, the tomb is interesting, for a few reasons I'll go into another time, but Tutankhamun and his reign weren't really of significance in their day. The end of his reign was significant, because with it a brief, strange new age came to an end, but Tutankhamun's importance really comes about in the 20th century and beyond. He's proven to be a draw for tourists the world over, and indeed finished his last international tour in 2020 where certain armchair Egyptologists booked tickets to see him and couldn't go because of Covid. The footage I've been using comes from a much longer video by the Luxor Times, I'll link to that in the description below, and if this topic has piqued your interest then you should take half an hour to check that out, it's really worth a look. You'll get to see a lot of what's been discovered so far up close, guided by the experts. Let me know if you want more about Dazzling Art and soon, I'm inclined to wait until there's more known, but I'll look into it further if you think it's worth doing. If you enjoyed this video and want to help my channel grow, I'd appreciate a like. And as always, you can let me know in the comments if there's anything you want me to cover in a future video, or if you have questions about this one. Until next time, my fellow armchair Egyptologists, life, prosperity, and health to you all. Thanks for watching. Head over to my channel for more, or click here to see what the YouTube demons think you should watch next. I hope you'll consider subscribing. If you'd like to support and collaborate on the channel with me, go to patreon.com slash armchair Egypt. You can also join my Discord community, there's an invite link in the description.